Hello everyone, Simo here. This is my next project, the Bell XFL1 Aero Bonita from Fiddler's Green. The Bell XFL Aero Bonita was a US experimental shipboard interceptor developed for the US Navy in 1939. As you can see from the shape, it's very similar to the successful Bell Air Cobra produced for the US Air Force between 1940 and 1944. There were some slight differences to allow it to be flown from a carrier deck. It had a tail dragger configuration instead of the tricycle undercarriage. There was no central cannon and it had large engine air scoops under the wings. Only one prototype was produced for the Navy and it was deemed successful under the evaluation. However, the competition was fierce and further development was stopped in favour of the faster, though not quite as pretty, Vought F4U Corsair. Now on the original model, it is printed on five sheets, but I wanted to utilise some new silver paper I purchased to represent the metal fuselage. Now the colours don't come out well on silver paper. Black ink is fine, but not colours. They look very washed out. So what I've done here is use Photoshop to separate the metal elements, such as the fuselage, the tailplane, prop, and put them on separate sheets so that I can print them out on the silver paper and I'll not waste it. I've printed the wings on 200 gram satin photo paper and they came out very well. But as you can see, I made a mistake on the first two silver sheets and I tried to protect it with varnish and it, it came out as a horrible smeared mess. So I went to the hobby shop and bought some spray fixative and that's worked much better. Some of the metal elements have coloured sections such as on the fin and the windows. So what I've done is print those out on thin 80 gram paper and I'll cut those out and paste them on top of the metal parts. In effect, treat them like decals. Fiddler's Green provides you with the usual potted history and assembly details and you can get more info from their website. Okay, let's get on with it. I'm going to cut out some of the main parts and do my usual trick of using a bradle to mark the fold lines and a blunt needle tool to bring out panel lines. This tool is actually from a cake decorating set. Secondly, I use a cogged wheel to form the rivet lines. And this tool is actually a dressmaker's wheel for marking cloth. I'm cutting out the thin coloured parts to paste onto the metal elements. That looks much better. The model shows closed wheel doors, so I've printed up decals representing open wheel wells. With the decal parts put to one side to dry, I get on with shaping the fuselage. These long tweezers are very useful when you need to reach deep inside the fuselage. Back to the coloured elements and they are dry enough to cut out now.
There's a small window by the pilot's feet. I'm not sure what it's used for. A window for a camera, perhaps. Or maybe it's just to help the pilot to land on the carrier deck. For large models, I usually stuff the fuselage with tissue, and this helps it to give it strength. Although it's not essential, I make up card formers to insert into each section as I work from nose to tail. onto the wings and I form the leading edge into a nice rounded shape before gluing the trailing edge. I've placed the trailing edge of the wings under the glass mat while the glue dries to keep them flat and free from warp. I should explain if you can't see it already that I have a glass plate on top of the black cutting mat. I prefer in most circumstances to cut out on the glass and it's useful for other things as well. I used a wooden skewer to help the tailplane keep its shape and once dry I'll also stuff it with some tissue to keep its form. Once it's all dry, I can cut out the wing root. It needs more formers to keep the wing root in shape. Now the wings can be glued directly to the wing root, but I wanted to be able to take the wings off if I ever needed to store the model. So I needed to make a central spar that the wings could slide onto and be secure. So here is my idea. Please pause the video if you want to study it. 
I'm not going to go through everything I did to make the spa. Suffice to say, there was a lot of measuring and trial and error. So, good. The central spar is in place, ready for the completed wings. This is the hollow wing spar glued inside the wing. The wing is being held down by heavy things while the glue dries. The wing will be stuffed with tissue and it should be ready to connect with the central spar. It's time to put the cockpit canopy on. First the rear canopy. It requires a couple of cuts in the body to accept the tabs and then a bit of glue applied. Finishing the wings, I close the tips and stuff in some more tissue. The wings fit on fairly easily and look straight. Nearly ready for the tail services. The tail plane's ready. The fin just needs a toothpick and some tissue to give it strength. Wing fairings can be troublesome to fit, so I glue the rear end on first, let that dry and then form the fairing into the body shape. The prop has already been pasted onto a 160 gram sheet. I formed a curve into each blade and glued a sliver of foam between the blades. After tidying up the edges, I glued the prop disc to the spinner. 
I'm going to glue the assembly to the nose and have a fixed prop rather than worry about making it spin. Just a little painting to finish the prop and spinner. Next, the tail surface is gone. Next, the fin. The wing scoops are just small pieces bent into shape and glued in place. The wheels provided by Fiddler's Green are very simple, just two tyre walls and a tyre tread strip. This makes quite a boxy wheel so I prefer to make my own with layers of card to produce a, a balloon shaped tyre. It takes a little more time but I think it's worth it. A little sanding and painting and the wheels are done. The undercarriage legs are carefully cut out, pasted onto thicker paper and strengthened with a toothpick. The tail wheel gets a similar treatment. The wheels are fixed to the legs by super gluing onto a metal pin. Time to complete those small final details. The tail hook made from a paper clip.
The engine exhaust made from small pieces of wood dowel. Not forgetting those wing scoops I made earlier. The Aero Bonita, just like its cousin, the Aero Cobra, has to have its distinctive air scoop behind the cockpit. I felt the canopy colour was a little too light so I painted it in slightly darker blue before applying two coats of gloss varnish. And finally, just need to stick the propeller on. And so the model's finished, the Bell XFL1 Aero Bonita from Fiddler's Green. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you have any comments, then I'd love to hear them. And of course, please like and subscribe. So, with that, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.